The Northeaster Dory Scale Model Kit by Chesapeake Lightcraft. This video shows you every step in assembling an exact 1 8 scale model of the popular Northeaster Dory design. Working from a laser cut kit, you can build this model in about a week of evenings. Building the model is almost exactly the same sequence of steps as building the 17 foot long original, only there's no epoxy or fiberglass and a lot less sanding. Only basic tools and supplies are required, including CA glue, a hobby knife, and a sanding block. A complete list is in the printed instructions and at clcboats.com. You'll need a smooth work surface to build your model. Protect it with wax paper as you'll be getting glue and paint on your table. To fit in the box, the Dory model's parts have a puzzle joint, just like the full-size kit. You'll fit these together and glue them with cyanoacrylate glue, or CA glue, also known as super glue. Try not to use too much CA glue. It makes a mess, and you only need a tiny drop on each joint. The narrow applicator tips you can put on the CA glue bottle helps a lot with precision. A spritz of accelerator will make the CA glue cure in seconds. Make sure the planks are aligned carefully. As soon as they're cured, you can sand them. 120 grit sandpaper on a wooden block is perfect. Glue up the rest of the planks. Now we'll assemble the frames. The frames are stiffened with thin plywood doublers, again, just like the full-sized Northeaster Dory. This is the transom, which has a doubler on the inside. We've marked its location for you. The transom doubler is supposed to be slightly narrower than the transom. On frames one, two, and three, the doublers are glued to both sides. The number four frame has only one doubler.
smooth up any squeezed out glue. Time to assemble the hull. Make sure you've got the bow ends of the number one planks lined up with the bow end of the bottom panel. This model is put together stitch and glue fashion, just like the full size boat. Make a bunch of one inch or 25 millimeter links of thin copper wire. You'll start at the bow. Bend the wire double, like a sort of staple, and pass it through adjacent wire holes in the planking. Then twist it finger tight. The wire twists go on the outside of the boat. If you're sure alignment is correct, go back and tighten the wires with a pair of pliers. In this case, we found we needed an extra stitch hole up at the bow. Use a hobbyist drill with a 1 32nd inch bit. The frames are installed next. The frames notch into mortises on the bottom panel and line up with scored lines on the number one panel. Alignment is very important at this stage. If the lines aren't lining up with the bulkheads and the planking, you may need to readjust your wires. The number one planks are wired together at the bow.
at least four different pieces are coming together when you first install the transom. This makes it a little trickier, something that's very much like the full-scale Northeaster Dory. Start by stitching the transom to the bottom panel. Remember, the transom sits inside the planking, not outside. Start adding planks. I found it was easiest to wire from the middle outwards. Again, alignment is very important here. You can use the puzzle joints to align the planks and also the lines marking the bulkheads. Glue the frames to each plank as the plank is added.
Start gluing the hull together from the inside. Here I'm gluing the transom. Glue the stem from the inside. The breast hook is a little V-shaped piece of wood that will give the bow its shape and additional strength. A light sanding will make it fit better. Now is the time to finish up any gluing of frames and planking. Look for any places where the planking isn't meeting up. You don't want to be able to see daylight between the planks. Press the planks together gently, but make sure you don't put a bump in the boat. Ultimately, every plank seam is glued the whole length of the model. The bottom panel is best glued from the inside.
With the model glued together, you can start removing the wires. I clip one leg of the wire, then roll it gently out of the boat. Another way to do it is to snip the wire on the inside, then pull it from the outside. Snip from the inside, and pull from the outside. Hand sanding will clean up the exterior of the hull. Here I'm smoothing the stem for a finished appearance. There's a bit of overlap of the planks at the transom. Sand the transom flush. Whoops, I snapped a glue joint. No big deal, just glue it back. The rails give the boat stiffness, both at scale model size and at full size. The rails are installed flush with the top plank. Start at the bow and glue just a little bit at a time. The CA glue cures much too quickly to 
to apply glue to the entire rail. Here, I'll get the rail started correctly, let the CA glue cure, then finish gluing the rest of the rail. Don't glue more than about a hand's width at a time. You can use ordinary paper binder clips to clamp the rail to the boat. Trim the rail at the transom. Leave a little bit extra so you can sand it smooth. Install the other rail the same way. If you find any gaps in your rail gluing, patch them up now. A razor and sandpaper will help you trim the rails at the stern. Round off the rails at the bow and stern for a pleasing appearance.
A smooth taper looks nice. Don't leave them chunky. Next, add the skeg. The skeg is a sort of fin that is attached to the underside of the boat at the stern. Make sure the skeg is right on the center line of the boat. Here I'm eyeballing down the length of the boat to make sure that it's exactly right. Time to start thinking about painting. Everything should be smoothed very carefully with 120 grit and 220 grit sandpaper. The next pieces to install are the daggerboard trunk and the mast step. The daggerboard trunk is marked for the internal spacers.
The daggerboard trunk will need a little bit of sanding to smooth the edges. The mast step is made of three small pieces of wood, and the alignment of the three pieces can be tricky. Check the diagram in the instruction manual to make sure you've got everything turned around the right way. The daggerboard trunk slots into the bottom panel. The mast step is glued to the bottom panel just in front of frame one. Next, assemble the dagger board and the rudder.
handles at the top of the dagger board keep it from sliding out of the trunk. Give it a trial fit. The dagger board will probably require some sanding to fit nicely. You can create a perfectly scale airfoil in your dagger board or just give it a light sanding. The rudder starts with cheeks glued to either side. The tiller yoke is glued to the top of the rudder. The thwarts are the last bit of hull construction. Give these a nice sanding on all edges. Ports are glued down to the frames.
Use an ordinary paper towel to clean the dust off the hull. Any generic wood putty is good to smooth up your Northeaster Dory hull. Just like spackle, you'll put it on a little thick, then sand it all off smooth. To prepare the interior for varnish, there's nothing to it but patience and a little scrap of sandpaper to reach every corner inside the model. On the outside of the hull, work your way from medium to very fine grit sandpaper and sand everything smooth, getting rid of all of the excess wood putty. Wipe the hole down with isopropyl alcohol to get any residue off. Before you paint, you'll need to mask off the rails, which will probably be varnished. I used a high quality solvent proof tape so that I didn't get any leak through of paint onto the rails.
Wipe any dust and residue off with isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. Make sure you've got good ventilation before you start painting. We used a generic black spray paint for the hull. It'll take a couple of coats. After the first coat has dried, give the hull a light sanding with very fine sandpaper. I used 400 grit. Another wipe down with isopropyl alcohol removes the sanding residue. Two coats of spray paint was plenty. Remember, this can be any color you like. When the paint is dried, peel the tape off the rails. More surface prep in the inside is necessary before you varnish. The hull requires tape just as the rails did, as varnish looks lousy on top of paint. I used lots of masking tape to keep the varnish off of the paint. Any fast drying interior furniture varnish is fine.
just as in the full-sized Northeaster Dory, the mast is carefully tapered. Impatient builders may just want to rig the simple stick that's included in the kit, but it'll look clunky and not at all to scale. Full-size drawings in the kit will guide you in tapering the mast correctly. I used a small, sharp block plane to cut the tapers. If you don't have a block plane, coarse sanding paper will get you to the same place, just take a little longer. The mast gets pretty skinny at the top. That's intentional. Finish up the tapering work with a sanding block and round all the corners off so that the mast has a nice appearance and doesn't look bulky. Finish up with fine sandpaper and one last check of the plans to make sure that it matches. The boom doesn't have any taper, it's just rounded over nicely with a sanding block. The masts are spray varnished just like the interior, along with the rudder and dagger board.
After a light sanding in preparation for a second coat of varnish, I pull out my black paint pen and add some trim paint to the rudder. Under varnish, nobody will know that's not paint. A bit more fine sanding and the last coat of varnish is sprayed on the interior. Ores start as two rough blanks of plywood glued together. Patient sanding with 120 grit sandpaper yields a lovely pair of oars. The oars are a detail that you don't want to skip over quickly. You don't want oars that look chunky and rough. It's just not scale. A matching pair of oars took me about 20 minutes in all. A stand for your model boat is glued up out of laser cut plywood.
you've been provided with sailcloth and a full-size pattern for the Northeaster Dory's sails. Start by taping the pattern to your workbench. Next, tape the rectangle of sailcloth on top of the pattern. With a fine point permanent ink marker, trace the outline of the sail with a straight edge. You'll also trace details like stitching lines, patches, and reef points. I used ordinary cellophane tape to reinforce the edges of the sail. The tape is too wide to look right on the sail, so I only overlapped about an eighth of an inch. The rest will be cut off with a razor knife in a moment. Cut the sails free from the sailcloth blank with a razor and a straight edge. You can use scissors too.
The rudder hangs on the transom like a hinged door. You'll make some small eyes using copper wire. These are shown at full size in the paper plans. Drill holes for the eyes in the rudder and the transom. Glue the eyes in place.
A single wire connects the four eyes to hold the rudder on the transom. You'll need four more eyes of a slightly different pattern to support the rigging of the mast. Eyes are glued to the back side of frame one on either side. Another eye is fastened to the inside of the boat's stem. The last eye is attached to the mast. The plans show you exactly where. The boom is attached to the mast with a single bit of wire. This is called a gooseneck in the full-sized boat. The location for the gooseneck is shown in the plans. There are lots of possible ways to attach the mainsail to the mast and boom. You could stitch them to the spars with a needle and thread, for example. 
After some goofing around, I found that gluing the sails to the spars with CA glue was the fastest, easiest, and frankly best looking way. The trick is to not use too much CA glue. I started with some glue at the top of the mast and then a little bit down at the gooseneck to stretch the sail tight on the mast. Then a bit at the end of the boom and I had the three corners of the sail pulled tight. Now I could align the sail on the center of the spar and add tiny dots of glue. Set the boat in its stand and place the mast in the mast step. The model is rigged with ordinary white sewing thread. Glue a length of thread to the head and the tack of the jib. The jib is fastened to the mast first at the head. I found that rather than tying knots and thread with my stubby fingers, it was easier to simply glue the thread. Side shrouds attach to the mast and to the eyes on the boat, tension the rig, and ensure that the mast is standing up straight.
Some model builders go crazy at this point with scale details. I just made some more locks out of copper wire and called it done. Looks pretty good. Measure for the orlock locations, which are shown in the plans, and drill a hole in the rails. Clear your mantelpiece, set up your Northeaster Dory scale model, and enjoy. For Chesapeake Lightcraft, I'm John Harris. Visit us at clcboats.com.